There is a reason so many seek the comfort of sanctuary. We are talking Death Rider in the House of Vampires. This is a 2021 movie uh, directed, produced, uh, and starring Glenn Danzig, of course, known, I think, primarily through his music, uh, frontman of The Misfits, Sam Hayden, obviously, his solo career. He has made a movie before called Verotica, which I have reviewed on the channel and was not very good, to put it politely. But here he is in a second attempt. Uh, Verotica was an anthology. This is kind of one uh, singular story Obviously, a horror western with a title like that that stars actually a pretty good cast of recognisable names here. Uh, Devin Sora is our kind of our, our main character of Death Rider, uh, but of, you've got Julian Sands, who you probably know mostly from Warlock, but he's no stranger to vampire movies, having starred in Tale of a Vampire. You've also got Kim Director, who I think is probably most known for her work in uh, Book of Shadows, The Blair Witch 2. You have a number of kind of adult uh, actresses, shall we say, and you've got small parts for the likes of um, Eli Roth, the Suska Sisters, uh, Sean Waltham, aka X Pack. Uh, so it's a kind of somewhat of a better cast, you might say, than Verotica, and as such, uh, the acting is somewhat. Um, somewhat better and of course you've got Danny Trejo shows up as well why not okay so what is the story so it focuses on Death Rider who is a lone gunslinger who goes to this out of the way kind of a complex I guess you'd call it uh, it consists of a of a bar but there's also some other kind of like uh, uh, chambers within this kind of small compound I guess in the old west but it is uh, all kind of has vampires inside of it. It's kind of all populated by vampires. It, it, the action mainly takes place within this kind of saloon. Um, and he's kind of there and he sort of, you, you know he's got some type of agenda, but you're not quite sure what. And the, kind of the vampires there are sort of somewhat suspicious of him. He himself appears to be a vampire. Uh, but nonetheless, there is a little bit of suspicion going on. They have that kind of hierarchy with Judy and Sands kind of being the, kind of the top dog there. Uh, Glenn Danzig actually plays a kind of a, um, a bar patron who uh, may have uh, a connection as well. So what will happen, you'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let us discuss what I think works with Death Rider in the House of Vampires. This is an improvement over Verotica, that has to be said, but that really wasn't all that hard since Verotica was really bad and I think made it into my uh, top 10 worst movies of the of the year that particular year but can we say anything legitimately that works in Death Rider it is a good cast I actually quite enjoyed seeing these kind of uh, genre faces sh show up and uh, you know the acting for a lot of the cast not all there are still some dodgy acting here but the, a lot of the cast is better than obviously the likes of Rotica because you have more professional actors here but I will say even some of these sequences with their aforementioned act actors there are still some um, issues which we'll come on to but I would say overall the acting is certainly better than Verotica and I think these actors who have a little bit more experience bring a little bit more flavour to the kind of the proceedings Talking of flavour, I actually quite like the kind of the stylistic grindhouse feel this movie has. This kind of this dirty western. You can imagine this would be a sort of thing that Robert Rodriguez would kind of be interested in. It kind of has that sort of feel to it. I've seen comparisons to Dust Till Dawn. It really is vampires in a bar, but the actual film is not really anything like that, to be honest with you. But there are some kind of uh, some reasonable kind of stylistic choices, and I actually didn't mind some of the kind of the practical effects there with the kind of the vampire thang fangs and things like this. A small thing that I kind of liked, I didn't feel the vampire characters were constantly tripping over themselves speaking with fangs on. One of the kind of the pet peeves I have the vampire movies is where vampires 
you know, the actors playing vampires constantly have to sort of show you their fangs and it kind of looks really unwieldy and not unnatural. Then vampires, you know, the, the actual characters seem to always have a lisp and things like that. I think the actual fangs and stuff, it's a small thing, but uh, like I said, I think they were incorporated a little better. But it works well with some understated kind of practical effects here, I think, that did the movie's favour. Even some of the kind of the more visual effects, although they are on the lower budget side, you know, I think it's acceptable for this kind of level of movie. Um, you know, it, it's, it was funny, you know, we see people kind of bursting into, or vampires bursting into flames when they're kind of exposed to kind of sunlight, uh, things like that. There's a couple of like amusing moments within the kind of the movie as well. And I, I kind of quite liked some of the characters that they were kind of we were introduced to. They are massive cliches and underwritten, but nonetheless, I still feel that some of the kind of the characters did still have a, 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 a fun vibe to them. And I do think this movie has a degree of entertainment value. Verotica was a real chore to sit through. This one, it has some real serious issues, which we'll talk about in just a second, but I didn't feel it was, it was a chore. It was at least entertaining on some level if you are a fan of B-movies. However, let's now transition into what doesn't work. I think, unfortunately, uh, Glenn Danzig is, you know, he, I don't think he's taken notes from the last movie. Uh, that was kind of critiqued, and apparently he was quite surprised that people didn't like Verotica. But I feel some of the problems that were evident in Verotica are still here. A lot of it is on the technical side. So unfortunately, the technical elements here um, cause problems. Uh, let me just kind of give you an example of what I mean. Some of the kind of the camera work here is again reminiscent of what we've seen in in Verotica. Now, my, I, I suspect this now might be a a, a choice by Glenn Danzig to kind of try and have this a kind of a particular kind of style. So some of the things he might do, for example, is have like you know the camera kind of zoom in a few times. It will kind of zoom in, stop, zoom in again, stop, stop. But it looks less just like you know home videos on a, on a kind of a camcorder because of it, and it gives it this kind of really amateur feel. Now, as I said, I suspect this because this is now on two films, and I feel that clearly Den Dan, uh, Glenn Danzig hasn't taken notes from the previous one. This is his you know choice of style really, but it gives it this kind of like this weird amateurish feel to it, and that's just kind of that one thing that we have like constant use of, of, of fading. The, it, the, the camera lingers far too long on, on sort of certain scenes. If you've ever watched Family Guy and they have this kind of running gag where scenes are kind of like drawn out unnaturally long where they kind of feel a little bit awkward, this film does it unironically. Um, so we have scenes here where, it, it, you know, you, you're expecting like an edit, but it doesn't. The scene just kind of carries on for you know, sometimes sort of 30 seconds long, you're thinking, you, you look sort of like, you're almost a little bit, ooh, I feel a little bit kind of awkward because this film feels like it's, someone should have said. I mean, it was produced by um, James uh, Cullen Bresick, who is a reasonably uh, established producer at this point, but I think, you know, he hasn't pushed back on Danzig enough, if you ask me here, because there's some choices here that just make the film seem weirdly just kind of like dull and kind of stretched out because uh, it needed to be, it needed to have a little bit more punch to it. Part of the reason I think this maybe was done is because this the story here is so slight. Um, when it comes down to it, there's not a lot of plot in this movie. And this is perhaps why some of these scenes seemed so much stretched out because they were kind of wanting to have a kind of a particular feature at the running time and as such, we have these long drawn out scenes that really have no purpose being that kind of long because there really isn't a lot of kind of story here. There's also some technical aspects with the kind of the sound design. I actually could have quite like the music, I'll say that. Uh, Glenn Danzig obviously primarily known for his music and I do feel that the music is, is, is done to a good effect there. And there's certainly some um, loving nods to kind of like Morricone and stuff like that. However, the actual sound design itself is, is kind of poorly handled. You, there's certain scenes that feel like they're missing like a layer of audio or, you know, they needed to have a little bit more kind of like um, 
fine tuning in regards to kind of like, you know, the volume controls and and how kind of ambient music is playing compared to kind of you know sound effects. It just sounds unfinished, uh, unfortunately. So the sound design here is um, particularly kind of clunky. Now, all of these things, I think, have an effect on how the movie is then portrayed in regards to the acting. Because although I think this movie does have some, some more established actors in it, because of the kind of the clunkiness and the amateurish feel to the way this movie is constructed, some of the kind of the scenes here, um, you know, you feel like the actors are just kind of like spinning their wheels a little bit. Because like Danzig has just said, you know, action, the scenes could have played out, but it's not sort of said cut, so they're kind of like, uh, they're just adding extra lines of dialogue. There's a, there's a scene with um, Devin Sora's character and uh, Julian Sands' character at the end. This kind of confrontation. And the dialogue between those two characters is so uncomfortable. It, 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 it makes the acting seem really hokey. Now, that may well be the case, but it, I think a lot of that is down to the production. But there are some kind of like characters here where obviously the, clearly the acting isn't great and obviously the dialogue is probably as cheesy as you expect. I feel some of the kind of the, um, the character moments here is are, are, are just not really developed. I mean, we don't really know. I mean, the whole point of Death, the, uh, the Death Rider is he's a stranger. I get it. He's this kind of like, you know, uh, we don't really know much about him. Uh, because he wants to be mysterious. They want to have a mysterious kind of lead character. I understand that. But at the same time, we really don't know why um, the character of this Death Rider is there and kind of, and he's doing what he's doing. We get a little bit more of a kind of a, a reveal at the end to kind of, you know, attempt to give him a little bit of motivation, but it's, it's so underdeveloped. But also the kind of, the actual kind of vampires themselves and this, this kind of world that they inhabit. Again, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me a lot of the time. Um, because I was thinking, is this kind of, this whole kind of compound completely kind of populated by vampires? Because there appears to be just some humans wandering around as well. I'm like, why are they there? Uh, you know, why, you know, why, why do they just, there's, there's a couple of like human bar girls, for example. That, for example, Glenn Dance just grabs one and kills one. And he's like, well, why are they there? You know, why aren't they trying to kind of get a escape? They don't appear to be there uh, under duress necessarily. That They're just there. We see a couple of, um, you know, just humans kind of getting killed. And, you know, there's a, there's a scene at the beginning where uh, you have to bring a virgin to be able to get entry. But it doesn't, doesn't really kind of give you anything there. So why are these, you know, what is the society? How are they kind of... Um, being managed, they slaves, are they there? Can they not escape? Do we ever say no? It's nothing like that. So the the world building here is is kind of so poorly developed. And then finally, I have to talk about some of the kind of the uh, the the action kind of sequences of which, to be honest, with you, there is not a lot. We get a, a you know a couple of um, confrontations and conflicts at the end of the movie, but they're kind of just so unexciting to kind of watch unfortunately the way, again the way they are filmed I think a lot of this is down to the kind of the technical elements of the movie um, they're just kind of like this we have a shootout in this kind of bar scene and it's the most unexciting uh, and uh, undramatic kind of shootout that you'll see uh, just again the way it's filmed the way the kind of like the, the sound effects are not incorporated particularly well or, or you know, music and things like this it unfortunately has a real, just amateurish feel to it, I, I have to say. Now, I think Danzig has got some stylistic um, choices, certainly, and I think some of these are interesting. I think this movie is interesting. It's an interesting film to watch, because I feel, obviously, that the clear, kind of like, you know, leader of this kind of movie is Danzig, and he wants to have done things his way, and no one's going to say no to him. But because of that, the film suffers. Had he ha have you had a little bit more of a collaboration, I think this movie could have been a lot smoother, a lot more kind of like um, palatable for a kind of like, a, you know, more of a kind of an audience, to be honest. But as it stands, it feels very much like a, um, you know, Danzig's vision. Um, and that's all well and good. But it, it depends what you, if you're making the movie yourself, that's great. But if you want this to be a commercial venture, then you have to think maybe a little bit more uh, commercially ultimately that being said it is an improvement I do think this does show some kind of um, you, you know an improvement in the 
art of filmmaking by Dandy, but I still, you know, I would like to have him a little bit more kind of uh, collaboration with more, maybe more established, maybe co-directing or Dandy being a producer and it's someone else direct. And I think you probably would have got a, a more polished film here. But it's still somewhat entertaining. I'll give this one a 4 out of 10. Have you seen it? What did you think of it? Leave me a comment and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.